Hey, uh, so we're going to talk about a particular method today, uh, one that gets user input. So, so far we've talked about variables and we've talked about uh, methods. We said variables are things that can store information, methods are little snippets of code that can do something. Uh, well, there's a one method that would be really useful and that's to get a particular variable. So imagine you're writing a program and you'd like to know uh, the name of the person at the keyboard or you'd like to have the person at the keyboard pick a number or do anything, type any information in. It would be nice to have a method that could get that piece of information for you. Now in general, anytime you're typing on the keyboard, you're hitting a lot of keys, you're putting together what we call a string of text. So we're going to write one generic method that gets a string from the user. So let's start. Uh, first thing is because it's a method, we have this kind of standard format. So we have public and static as our modifiers. And the next thing is a return type. I already said we're going to get a string because that's going to be the most common thing to, for someone to type in. So a name, a place, a sentence. Uh, so public static string with a capital S. And then we need a name. How about if we call this method uh, get string from the user? It's very obvious what it does. So the name of a method should give you some sense of what it does. We could call the method x. That doesn't tell us anything. So we'll call it get string from user. And the telltale sign of being a method are these parentheses, so we'll write them. And then we need to do a code block, so we do an open curly brace. And down here we'll do a closed curly brace. All right, so far so good. Now we just got to write the method. So what we're going to use is uh, an object that's already been defined in the Java language. Uh, it's a thing called a scanner. And what a scanner does is scans. It can scan a keyboard, it can scan a file, but it can look at some other place that the computer can see and tell you what information is there. So we need to make a scanner. We're actually going to create another variable inside this method. So we're going to create a variable to store a scanner objects. So scanner, let's call it SC. So type, name, and then information. Now a scanner is not a really simple piece of information, like a number or a letter. So it's, it's not a primitive type, it's an object. And because objects are more complicated than primitive types, you can't just write seven or a cat here. Instead, we're going to write this little statement that says new, means make room for, and then scanner with parentheses. Uh, and this thing here is actually what's called a constructor. It's another type of method. It's a special method that builds one of those objects. Uh, the problem is this isn't enough. We need to tell it what to scan. So we're actually going to put inside these parentheses a parameter, you know, information that the scanner needs to know to do its job. So we're going to say scan from system dot in, which is the keyboard. All right, so we have a scanner. Uh, a scanner I see equals new scanner system dot in. Uh, now what we have to do is say look at the keyboard and take in the next line. So we can do it really easily by writing s c dot and when you type that dot you should have a uh, little list pop up on NetBeans for you and we're going to take next line which means the next statement the person types in followed by enter now this is going to give us a string and that's what we want although we don't want a string we want to return a string a return type of string so we can just say to return this line Return sc.next line. All done. Now, uh, there's one or two couple things that are going to come up that uh, we should probably address. One is right now, if you're typing this in as we talk about it, you're probably getting an underlined here and here saying it doesn't know what a scanner is. This is because a scanner is a special object that is not by default. Uh, understood by the Java language. It's a piece of code that somebody wrote at some point in time that we can use. But the only way we can use it, or the only way this program could use it, is if we import it. Uh, meaning that we say, hey, go look up the definition of a scanner so you know what it is so you can use it here. The way you do that is two ways. 
You can either go all the way up to the very top of your file and write import uh, java.util.scanner, semicolon, uh, all the way to the very top. You'll see uh, right under the package line. Or even easier is right click on scanner, or it's underlined, and on the list that comes up, click fix imports, and NetBeans will automatically bring it in. So once you do that, these red lines should go away. Now you don't have any errors, but we do have a problem, because the way that this will work is when you call it, uh, it's going to pause what the program is doing and wait for the next line to be typed in. The problem is, if the person at the keyboard doesn't know they're supposed to type, they're not going to type anything. So let's refine this a little bit. How about right in the middle here, we put a print statement, system dot out dot print line enter text all right so now every time we ask the user or we get a string from the user it's going to print enter text then it's going to wait for the person to type something in and then when they hit enter it's going to return it and send it back to the program now we have a little bit of a problem here too, is that enter text is pretty generic. You know, what if we want the person to type in a noun? Or what if we wanted to type in a verb? Or what if we wanted to type in their name? Enter text doesn't really tell us that. So what we could do, you don't have to, but if you wanted to, instead of writing enter text here, we could instead write the word prompt. And since it's not in quotes, you know it's a variable meaning that prompt refers to something. And the thing it's going to refer to is a parameter that we take in up here. So now we can say, in order to get a string from user, I need another string. I need a prompt. And that prompt could be a message to the user. So now when we call this, so now we're down in your main method. And I say, hey, you know what? I need a string uh, name. I could say that's equal to get string from user and here's the prompt. Enter your name. So now when we actually call the method, remember we're in the main down here. When I call the method get string from user, I send a string to it. In this case, the text enter your name. Then, when this line gets executed, we run up here. This text goes in as the prompt. We make a scanner, print out the prompt, which is enter your name. Then we wait for the person to type in their name. They hit enter, and it gets returned, which goes back and it dumps it into that variable name. So. Now we have a method that allows you to ask the person at the keyboard to type stuff in. Hope that helps. Bye.